school mascot and school colors. So what is your school mascot and school colors? So our school mascot is the Oregon Duck. And the cool thing about him, hold him up. That's the duck, by the way. Do you see the duck? Cool. Yeah, it looks like Donald, yeah. Oh, my God. Well, the cool thing about the Oregon Duck is that originally it was a likeness of Donald Duck. There was a um, an agreement between Mr. Walt Disney and the president of the University of Oregon, and it was a gentleman's agreement, and they shook hands to allow Donald Duck to be our mascot. But over the years, he's changed... And so now he's not considered to be Donald Duck. He's just the Oregon Duck. And our school colors are green and yellow. I did my best to try to wear my green and yellow today. I, I see that. That's awesome. All right. we, we see the O on the table, by the way. It's really exciting. We're glad that you guys have our colors on your table. Yeah, absolutely. And here, you can show them, Amaya. We're ready. Yay. Awesome. We got some O's, some big Oregon signs here. There you go. Go ahead. Yep. So why did you guys choose the ducks? How did that become your mascot? So, um, we used to be called the tall furs and also the webfoots, and it kind of evolved into the duck. So our duck is called, his name is actually Puddles, and that's because, in part, it rains a lot here in Oregon, much more than it does in New Jersey. Um, Plus, the duck is really cool. It's unique. And Joelle kind of talked about the Disney connection. Um, but it's a very unique mascot. You won't find many ducks out there. And um, we're very proud to be a unique university with a great mascot. Excellent. How, did, how many students attend your school? So how big is the University of Oregon? How, big, how many students attend? We have just under 25,000 students, uh, total student body. Big, right, Gino? <laughs> can I can I ask how many students does your school have? Two hundred. <laughs> no, a little more than that. We're only K to two. Uh, we have about three hundred and seventy students. Wow. Okay. But our high school graduates about one hundred and five every year, so we're a very small district. Yeah. We have about twenty four, twenty five thousand. Yeah. Big. We uh, we're only a one square mile town, so we uh, we 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 graduate a very low number. So. Thinking of a school of that size, is it's hard for us even to comprehend it because you probably have more students at your school than are in our town. Uh, we only have about 11,000 in the town itself, so it's it's quite a bit more. Go ahead. How big are your class sizes? So with that many students, how big are your class sizes? So that's actually one of the great things about Oregon is even though you know that 24, 25,000 number is really big, we're really a medium-sized school. At least when you think about colleges, we're not a large, massive university. We're a medium-sized school. So it's pretty easy to get to know your teachers, your professors, also to meet new friends. Um, our student-to-teacher ratio is 20 to 1. So it means your average class size is about 20 students. Now that doesn't mean that every class has 20 students. There are certainly bigger classes. but it's not the kind of a school where you'll get lost in the crowd. It's a really nice medium-sized university. That's what I tell the students a lot is that, you know, right now there are about 18 students average in the classes here at our school. And I said, you know what, that may seem like it's small, might seem like it's big to some of you, but when you go away to college, you might have some classes with well over 200 students in there, and it's almost like you're sitting in a movie theater, but then once you get really specific in the area that you want to study, you might have some classes where uh, you only have 8, 9, maybe 12 students in a class when you get very specific with the area you want to study. Go ahead, Amaya. Oh, go ahead, George. How far is your school from Kingsport, New Jersey? So how far are you guys from Kingsburg, New Jersey? Um, I can take that one. Yeah, yeah. So guess where I grew up? What? I grew up in Atlantic City, New Jersey, not too far from where you live. You live about an hour south of us. That's it. Wow. Huh? So this way. This way. we are miles away from the other side of the country. So we're um, west, 
we're above California. So we're on the other side of the country, right near the Pacific Ocean. So we're not far from the ocean, but it's the other ocean. Exactly. So 3,000 miles in the other direction. 3,000 miles. So about in a plane, what does it usually take you to fly from New Jersey to Oregon? Yeah, I would say about five to six hours. Um, you could fly from Newark or you could fly from Philadelphia, New York City, and get into Oregon in about maybe six hours. It's not too bad. a four-day drive. Four, four days if you wanted to drive there. Which yeah. I think I would take a plane. Yeah. Now, how what close... do they do before planes, right? Yeah. I would just take a car. Plus now, um, where did, how far are you guys from the airport if you were going to fly into Oregon? Well, we have two uh, two airports really kind of to choose from. One right here in Eugene, um, and that's about 20 minutes away, but it's not a very big airport. Um, if we were to fly from Eugene to New Jersey, uh, we would probably fly from Eugene to Portland and then get on another plane and then fly to the East Coast. But a lot of people take the, there's a two-hour drive, from Eugene to the big city of Portland, two hours north, and uh, we fly out of there. Excellent. Okay. Now, what types of things are there to do on the camp on the Oregon campus, and then in the surrounding area uh, around the campus? What types of things are there to do? I mean, I know Oregon is very well known uh, for outdoors activities. So, what kind of things are there to do up there? Yeah, so um, one big difference from New Jersey is that um, we have so many more opportunities, I would say, for those activities. So if you like, you know, mountain biking or river rafting or skiing or going out to the Oregon coast, there's so many great things that you can do outside. It's so beautiful here. Um, we have so many trees. Just to give you an idea, here on our campus, we have over 3,000 trees just right here at the University of Oregon. So you can imagine how many trees there are all across the state, right? Beautiful, beautiful state and a, certainly a beautiful city. And so going outside is a really fun thing for our students. We ride bikes here in Eugene. Do you guys, do you ride bikes? Do you like to ride bikes? Who likes to ride bikes? Okay, some of you. Yeah. I'm going to get a bike for Easter. What's that? He's going to get a bike for Easter, he said. Excellent. Right. Awesome. So... Great. You might fit into a, a place like Eugene because we're one of the top biking towns in the entire country. There's bike trails everywhere. We have a great river that goes through town. It's on, on the other side is where you can find the football stadium across from campus. There's more bike bridges than car bridges that cross that river, to give you an idea. Um, so outdoors activities, it's a really great city for music and also for arts. And our students are also involved in theater groups and in singing groups and all kinds of fun things. Excellent. So being that we would have to fly there and chances are we wouldn't be going home very often, what types of things are there to do on the weekends? Hmm, things to do on the weekends. Well, like Dave mentioned, um, we do have, we have a theater right here on campus um, and they uh, put on plays several times a year. We have the Jordan Schnitzer Art Museum. We have the Museum of Natural History. We have um, a Native American longhouse right here on our campus. Uh, also, in football season, of course, we will go and watch the, uh, the Ducks play at Autzen Stadium. Uh, we're just coming out of basketball season. We have a beautiful, brand new Matthew Knight Arena. And a lot of, con not, not only do our men's and women's basketball teams play there, there's volleyball, um, acrobatics and tumbling, uh, and concerts come through. We have, at the Matthew Knight Arena, we have uh, Pro Rodeo and uh, Cirque du Soleil. Um, monster trucks. Uh, monster <laughs> trucks, yeah, cool. absolutely. So there's always something something going along. Like I said, there's a, we have the uh, Holt Center for Performing Arts where the Eugene Ballet, Eugene Symphony play. Uh, so there's a lot of things to do. Um, and like I said, people go to the coast, they go skiing, snowboarding, go on up to Portland and see things. So there's always something to do uh, in Eugene, Lane County, and just about anywhere in the state. And of course, that's only after the students have done their homework, right? That's right. <laughs> Lots of studying. We have great libraries. So you have to do your homework first, but there's a lot of things to do for fun after that. 
<laughs> Go ahead, Maya. Very important to get into college, though. So very, very important. So what types of sports? I heard you mention uh, football and basketball, volleyball. What other types of sports are offered there? So we're national champions in acrobatics and tumbling, um, sort of gymnastics, that kind of a thing um, similar to that. We, of course, have a fantastic football team, Go Ducks, basketball, the things that Joelle mentioned. Um, track and field is really big here. Did you know that we hosted the Olympic trials here in Eugene? This summer, that means that for all of the American athletes that went to London in the Olympics, they had to come through our campus and run and jump and do their activities here on our field to qualify. It was an amazing experience. Some of our um, previous students, like Ashton Eaton, um, he's a fantastic representative for our university. He is a duck, and he won a gold medal in the Olympics. Excellent. You guys are the home of uh, Prefontaine, too, correct? Yeah. Exactly. We're known as Track Town USA. That's it. Go ahead, Amaya. Do you have any rivals? <laughs> you see that right there? <laughs> I do. <laughs> do you turn, um, tur if you turn right around and look at the board behind you, do you see that beaver? Do you see the brown beaver? He's got big teeth there, the white teeth. Yep, there he is. That's, uh -huh. <laughs> that's it. That's our uh, one of our biggest rivals. That's the Oregon State University uh, Beavers, and their school is about 20 minutes away from us. That close, huh? Well, no, I'm sorry. It's about 40 minutes away. Yeah, 40 to an hour. Yeah, 40 minutes. No, that, that's a very good school. Um, there, there are rivals, but it's a really great school, especially if you're interested in engineering and some other programs. Um, but we have something every year called the Civil War, which is a big, you know, athletic competition basically between Oregon State University, the Beavers, and the University of Oregon. Now, do you guys play? Are you, are you guys in the same okay. conference for sports? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so it's the Pac-12. So that also includes, um, I see USC up on your wall. So that's the University of Southern California. Also, the University of Washington, Huskies, and lots of other great Does your school have any traditions? Traditions. Well, you know, there's, there's many different types of traditions. One is, you know, Joel mentioned um, football. When you go to the football stadium, you literally walk over the river and through the woods to get to our football stadium. Um, it's on the other side of the river. And so there's this whole sea of green and yellow. So everyone is dressed up in green and in yellow as they go across to go to the football stadium. And here's what we can do. I'll, I'll let you guys get a little involved. So if everybody, if you put up your hands and make an O, can you guys do that? Make a big O with your hands. There you go. Yay, all right. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. When I say three, on the count of three, we're going to go like this. We're going to say, oh, okay? You ready? So, ready? One, two, two three. Oh. 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 <laughs> nice. How do we do? <laughs> you did great. All right, we're ready. <laughs> go ahead, Amaya. So what is the unit, what is Oregon best known for? Hmm. Well, like said, we said earlier, um, track was, it has been for many, many years, uh, a really, really big deal here. We're known as Track Town USA. Uh, as Dave said, the, um, the Olympic trials were here, uh, the NCAA, uh, uh, Track championships are often held here. Uh, so we have a long, long history of, uh, of track in this town. Um, you know, one of uh, a graduate of the University of Oregon is Phil Knight. Um, and is the, you know, do you know who Phil Knight is? No. Yeah. No? No? Do you guys know what Nike is? Yes. Yeah, of course. You guys, yes. some of you have Nikes on. 
All right. Well, um, Nike was this, the company was kind of born here at the University of Oregon uh, between Coach Bill Bowerman and um, one of his students or one of his track athletes, Phil Knight. And uh, Phil is now the the president of, of Nike, which is located. The company is located right here in Oregon. So that's one of the things. What else? And this is, by the way, this is a gold. It's not real, but it's a replica gold. See the gold. Kind of the metal. I got this from our track trials this summer. Pretty cool, right? Nice and shiny. I wish I could touch it, but technology is well, not advanced that far. Not, not that bad. Yeah. See, One just, day, your teacher might make, it, might make it work. Just think. Just think. If you guys start practicing now, perhaps you could try out if, they, if uh, Oregon ever holds the track trials again. Absolutely. Go ahead, Michael. So, um, but yeah, just to add to that, academically, we're very much so known for some great programs, things like business journalism, so writing and TV journalism, um, architecture, psychology. So we have lots of different programs. One of the cool things about college is that after high school, when you go into college, there are so many more opportunities to study some really cool things. That's something that Gino is interested in, is going into architecture. He wants to be a designer and a builder of homes and buildings. So Oregon might be the place for you, Gino. Yeah, we have a great architecture school. Michael, you had a question? Yeah. Go ahead. What, what team was your baseball team? How's your baseball team? Does Oregon have a baseball team? We do. Yeah, we, we have a really good baseball team. Last year, I can't remember how far we made it. We made it pretty far. Yeah, we, we, and, and they're off to a really, really good start um, this year also. They're kind, it's kind of new. Um, it's been, uh, we ha didn't have baseball for quite a while, and I, we gotten it back guys three years excellent yeah i noticed that uh oregon has always been very well known for its bright colored uniforms and those fancy helmets that the football teams always wear and i always found that i, I think that partnership with nike always allowed them to have those really you know fancy and elegant uniforms to really make them stand out when they when they play in a in a major game it's true yeah why did people so when people come out and visit Oregon, what is it about the school that makes them really want to choose to attend school there? Well, well I'll give my opinion on that, and, and Dave can too. Um, what I have found is that people who've never been here before, as soon as they hit the campus, as soon as they get a, one, a tour from one of our wonderful student ambassadors, they absolutely fall in love with it. It's a beautiful campus. We have really nice, really friendly people. Um, and it's just, it, you just feel really comfortable here. I, I think that the people really do fall in love with it. And um, the fact that we have great uh, academics here uh, is, it just makes it a whole package. People really fall in love with the campus and, the, and what we offer. Good. Absolutely. And like we talked about, it's so beautiful here. It's so green. You wouldn't even believe how green it is, how many trees there are. We're only about an hour to the Pacific Ocean. The Oregon coast is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and only about an hour or so to the mountains if you want to go skiing. So in one direction, it's the ocean. And in the other direction, it's the mountains. You can get down to places like Crater Lake National Park or up into Portland, the big city. So it's a great location. Um, I mentioned it's a medium-sized school. And really, it's a true college town. So... It's such a rare thing, but it means that when the closer you get to our city, if you're driving, for example, from Portland down into Eugene, the closer you get into Eugene, the more you start to see cars that say "Go Ducks" on them, and there's green and yellow everywhere. Even if you, you know, if you go to a, like a 7-Eleven where I got my coffee today, or if you go to one of our stores, you'll see a big duck on their window. It's a college town, so it's just green and yellow everywhere, and everyone's really excited for the university. So there's so much passion, and it's beautiful. And it's just such a great place to go to school. Now, the Oregon coast is much different from the New Jersey coast, being that you're from Atlantic City. I mean, we're used to wider beaches with lots of sand. It's not so much like that over in on the Oregon coast, correct? That's true. So uh, in New Jersey, you guys would refer to it as the beach or the shore, right? Yep. We, we call it the coast. And we do that for a reason because it's, it is a beach, but it's not quite the same. It's not the kind of a beach where people lay out and get, you know, suntan and um, go swimming and everything. Because the water is colder, 
And so it's not quite the same, but it is beautiful. So a lot of people go to the coast um, maybe to fly kites or to go um, picking up shells or to go surfing even. Um, so there's a lot of great opportunities on the coast, but it is, it is a little bit colder, so it's a bit different. Um, and big difference is that your beach, very flat, right? Our beaches, there's mountains and it's, it's the coast. And so you drive up the cliffs and up the rocks as you go um, along the coast. It's much different, um, but both coasts are very beautiful. So how big is the campus? So uh, 295 acres, which um, what that really means is that it takes about maybe 12 minutes to walk across campus. So from one side of the school to the far end of the other, it might take you about 12 minutes total to walk across campus. Which isn't bad um, at all. Exactly. But we also have, um, on, on the Oregon coast, we have a kind of a satellite of the school. We have a marine biology um, uh, place on the Oregon coast. Two hours up in Port, two hours up in Portland, we have um, the University of Oregon in Portland, and that's just a smaller building. Um, but they also have classes uh, classes up there in Portland. Okay. Do you live in Oregon? Do both of you live in Oregon now? Yes, we both live in Eugene. And you uh, are you both? Uh, now we know you're from New Jersey, but are you are you also from Oregon originally? I was born in Germany. I grew up in Portland, and then I graduated from the University of Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Naija. How do most people get around campus? So how do most people get around campus? That's a really good question. This is a bicycler's heaven. Bicycles everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And like Dave said, there are bike trails and paths. We have over 250 miles, is it 250 miles? Yeah, worth many, of, many trails. Of, of bicycle trails in Lane County. That's the county that Eugene is in. So probably the main way to get around campus is on bicycle and walking. Excellent. Go ahead, Naija. What are your most popular majors? So what are your most popular majors? So that would include definitely business, so if you want to run your own business one day, journalism, so if you like to write, maybe you want to be on TV and you know report the news, excellent, so there you go, so you might really like journalism. Um, if you know who Ann Curry is, she went to the University of Oregon, she's, she's a TV reporter person, um, broadcast journalist. We also have a really good architecture program we mentioned, so if you like to build things, really, really strong architecture program. And also psychology. So if you like to study, you know, the brain and how people uh, make decisions and what people are thinking about, psychology is a really good program here, too. Okay, go ahead. Michael, you had a question? No? What is the cost of your school? So there's the big question. What's the cost to attend Oregon? <laughs> So it all really depends, right? Because it depends on what kind of scholarships you might get, what kind of financial aid you might get. So um, as you get older and you start applying to colleges, you'll find that every school is different. So at the University of Oregon, it is out-of-state tuition, which means that unlike going to school in New Jersey, if you went out of New Jersey, it would cost more. But there's also the possibility that you may get scholarships, you may get grants, loans, lots of different opportunities to help with that. So right now, big number for students that includes um, tuition, so the cost of school, also your books, your supplies, your transportation costs, all those things. That total number is right around $43,000 per year. A lot of money, right? Yeah. 43000 but you yep. may get scholarships, you may get grants. Um, there's something called need aid, and so that means based on your family's need, you may be offered some sort of need aid. Um, but to get any type of merit, it's so important that you do well in school, and we can't emphasize that enough. If you want to go to college one day, whether it's the University of Oregon or any school, it is so vitally important that you do really, really well in school. Not just high school, but elementary school, middle school, because that will build that up. 
foundation that you can be strong in high school, get excellent grades, and maybe get some scholarships and aids that you can come out to a cool place like Oregon. And, and I tell them all the time, I say, you know what, it's great that you guys are already interested in colleges and I love to, uh, helping them prepare themselves for their future. But, you know, if they pick a school that they're really excited to, to want to attend one day, you know, it's not a given that you're going to be able to go to that school. There's a lot of hard work that's going to go into going there and different schools have different admission standards. So, you know, if you're selecting a school like Princeton or Yale, you know, you may need to start getting a, extremely focused now to help prepare yourself for that application process because they're extremely selective schools. Mm -hmm. That's true. Make sure you listen to your teachers. Make <laughs> sure you listen to your parents. Very important. It's so important. Okay. Do you offer scholarships? Now, your scholarships that you said, are they strictly merit-based or, or like are, are there also scholarships for, you know, maybe if you do athletics or if you are uh, in certain clubs or organizations at your school, uh, those sort of scholarships as well? Yeah, so there's different types. Um, certainly, we mentioned academic scholarships, so merit scholarships. That means based on your grades, your test scores, so... In high school, you'll take some college tests called the SAT or the ACT. Based on your test scores in high school and also your grades, you may be able to get academic scholarships, and that's all about what's happening in the classroom. There's also the opportunity for athletic scholarships, potentially, but very small number of those, and that's because they're very competitive, especially at a school like Oregon. When you think about our football team or our track and field teams, they're so good that it's really, really difficult to get any type of scholarship for that. But if you're good enough, um, if you're really good at a particular sport, certainly you can look into that. You can go to our website. It's www.goducks.com, and that's got all of our athletic information. Um, and there's also other types of scholarships. So, for example, there's something called the Diversity Excellence Scholarship, and that's an opportunity for students to apply separately for a scholarship if they're bringing a university to campus, if they have worked um, in fields or tra maybe they've traveled the world and they bring an international experience and um, they've gone to different schools and they uh, are really good to diversity, they could potentially apply for that scholarship separately. So there's different types. And I tell the students too, don't be discouraged by the, the cost of a school. If you love a school, regardless of what the cost is, there's a way to find a... There, there's, always an, a, a way to find out how to pay for that school, whether it be you know, through your FAFSA, through the financial aid that the government can provide for you, uh, if you have to uh, apply to as many scholarships as you can. And a lot of times if there is need-based aid, where if you know uh, your family doesn't make enough money, you, there's usually ways to help subsidize that cost. Absolutely. Yep. Do you have any famous alumni? Alumni. alumni. Do you have any famous alumni? Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dave mentioned Ann Curry earlier. She is on NBC. Yep. Um, we have, like you said, Phil Knight. Um, let's see who else off the top of my head. Uh, Sam. Oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, I can't remember his name. He's an actor. <laughs> there, there are so many, though. Um, and we mentioned just, you know, some of the Olympians, like recently with Ashton Eaton, he's more of a, a recent graduate, so we've got younger folks and older folks, and um, a lot of our graduates, they go on to all kinds of different programs, maybe, you know, into the business world, into TV, into um, working at, you know, um, ESPN and sports. We've got some, um, some great athletes who are in, you know, the NFL playing football right now, um, LaMichael James and the San Francisco 49ers, or... Um, uh, closer to you, um, I don't know how to pronounce this person. Holoti. Holoti. Holoti Nata. 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 Yeah. yeah. Well, the Baltimore Ravens. Super Bowl champion. Absolutely. So. Excellent. <laughs> what do you like most about your school? So what do both of you like most about Oregon? <laughs> I think I kind of mentioned it earlier. Um, it's, it's, a com it's a combination. It's just the beauty of this, the campus and the friendliness of the people; those things combined make it uh, make it a, just a, a awesome place for me. Absolutely, and just just the fact that I think people compared to the East Coast, there's a sort of I think more laid back, slower pace of life out in in the Pacific Northwest. 
And I really appreciate that because, again, I'm, you know, I'm from New Jersey and things were a bit busier, I think, in New Jersey. Um, although you guys are in a smaller town, so it's probably a little bit slower than the big cities. But um, I just really like that the atmosphere that exists here. People are friendly. They say hello. They open doors. And they're just, there's just this, this great sense of community here. Um, and that's a really cool thing. And, of course, the duck, our <laughs> excellent mascot, he's awesome. We're a bit biased, right? But we do think that green and yellow are the two best colors out there and that the duck is the best mascot. Excellent. Now, do you guys have any questions that weren't on the list? Go ahead, Naija. Um, why is this one? Well, why do you think it would be named Oregon? Where do you think it's located? In what state? Oregon. That's it. And then the mm-hmm. or, and Oregon State is also in Oregon, and they said it's about 40 minutes up the road, and that's also um, named after this. Got it. Why is Oh, is there a reason why you chose green and yellow as your colors? <laughs> Do you know? It looks like you have a hand up. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to take a guess, I'd say the green would definitely be because of the forests in the area. I'm I'm really not sure. Uh, that's a good. That's really something to, to research. But you know, we'll we'll have to research that and, and see if we can get an answer back to you in an email or something. Okay. <laughs> good, good question. Go ahead, Amaya. Wow, that's a good answer. It's a green because of uh, the the greenness of the community and where where the school is. It could very well be. Could be. Good thought. Go ahead, Amaya. Are there a lot of ducks in Oregon? Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of ducks and quite a few beavers, too. But um, when, on my drive um, to work each day, I'm driving down the road, and there's a lot of green and grass on the side of the road, and you can see the ducks waddling along. It's that time of the season, ducks and geese. Um, you walk around campus, and you'll see Mr. and Mrs. Duck walking along um, in the grass and, and right here on campus. Sometimes... And then uh, during spring, you'll see them walking along with their little uh, chicks, with their little babies following behind them. But you know what the biggest difference is? The biggest difference between our school and your school when it comes to ducks is that at at your school where you're at, you might see ducks. But out here, we have two kinds of ducks. There's the animal, but then there's the human duck, right? And there's thousands of students here that we call ducks. So Joelle and I are not just, you know... Adults and, and humans, but we're ducks at Oregon. Part of the duck nation, right? Right. Okay. One more. Go ahead, George. Michael, did you want to ask one about the football team? I know that was one of the reasons why you picked this this school. Do you guys have you guys ever have you both attended the football games out there? Oh yeah, I have every single game for the past five years, just about. <laughs> <laughs> now, are is are are all students guaranteed seats there? Is there a student section, or do they have to wait in line um, for for tickets? How does that usually work for students to go to games? There's a student section, and um, I don't know exactly how it works, but there's an uh, a lottery, I guess, kind of thing. They they get their tickets online. Okay. Yeah, it's sort of like um, if you've ever bought tickets for like. Southwest Airlines, you you pretty much you sign up at a certain time. Um, you go, you log on to the the website, and it's first come first serve. I have a, a friend of mine. He's from Los Angeles, and he California, and he goes to the University of Oregon, and he sets like two alarm clocks every every time that he's ready to prepare to go online. He wants to make sure that he gets those tickets. So um, they're limited, but certainly um, students do get free tickets. Excellent, Dad. How did you guys do in football this year? <laughs> Pretty good. We, uh, we've been doing very well for the last few years. Um, actually, our, our head coach, his name is Chip. He, he was, was Chip. He just left. and He's he went in our to neck Phil- of the woods now. <laughs> so he's near you, right? He's yep. in Philadelphia. So I hope you guys maybe, maybe try to root for the Eagles just a little bit this year. Um, you have an Oregon coach nearby. Um, but last year, we won a big game, the Fiesta Bowl. We beat Kansas State University. And the year before that, we won the Rose Bowl down in California. Um, and then the year before that, we, I'm sorry, wait, no, that was, yeah, yeah. The year before that, we um, lost, unfortunately, but we were in the big national championship game, played against Auburn University. 
yeah. um, down in Alabama. Very would, good team, and we, we just barely lost that one. But very, I would, very I would great. say you guys are definitely a perennial top five team. Yes. God, no. Asia. Exciting. Oh, how are the dining halls at Oregon? Ooh, really good. Very good. I, in fact, I, you know, I don't have to, but I, I like to eat there quite often. A lot of different things to offer. Uh, in one of, uh, one of our dining halls, uh, they have four different uh, places to eat. One's the Big Mouth Burrito, and they make burritos to order. Uh, the other one is the Fire and Spice Mongolian Grill, and you throw all the ingredients that you want, and they cook it right there in front of you. Uh, there's a little coffee shop there. In our new um, residence hall, uh, the Global Scholars Hall. We have uh, they have a really really neat um, uh, dining facility there with an international flair. You can get sushi. You can get different kinds of pasta. Um, internet kind of international foods. So um, there's a lot of different places uh, to eat. And I like to say the food is really uh, fairly healthy. Now and there's a lot of, there's a lot of choices. You can get ice cream. You can get fruit. You can get pizza. You, you can get, get so many different things. So it's not just like you go to the cafeteria and get whatever's for lunch that day. You get to choose. So it's very good. That's what I keep telling them. It's not like you guys, because they're going to lunch when we're done. Uh, it's not like here where you have one choice of either a hot or a cold lunch. When you go to a dining hall at a college, you walk in and you have probably hundreds of different choices of what you can want for, for lunch every day. Oh, I have one other question for you guys. Uh, coming from out of state, if, if they are accepted to Oregon, is housing guaranteed? It's not guaranteed, but we really haven't had much problem with getting uh, people into the residence halls that want to be in the residence halls. About 87, 88% of our incoming freshmen do stay in the residence halls. Um, and uh, so it's like I said, in the past few years, we have not had any problem with people getting rooms that wanted them. Excellent. Now, um, Joelle mentioned the Global Scholars Hall. It's our brand new hall. Um, beautiful new residence hall. So that's that has increased the number of rooms for students. So Shouldn't have any problem, but of course, you guys have quite a while before you're applying to colleges, so things could always change down the road, but um, right now, no issues at all, and it's a really good situation. Excellent. All right, so what do we say, guys, for, for these guys taking their time? It's very early in the morning out there in Oregon, so they got up a little early to talk to us out there, so what do we say? Thank you. And what, let's everybody put up our O's. Oh. And let ready? Go ahead, Michael. You can lead us. Oh. oh. I have, a feel, I have a feeling that's going to be very popular in our second grade hallway uh, after lunch. <laughs> you guys, you have to represent today. You that's have to, right. You have to right. represent the University of Oregon and make sure everyone is a doc catcher. Well, school. I think in the cafeteria this afternoon, they, they will be teaching everyone at their tables how to do the Oregon chant there. All right. <laughs> thank you guys so very much. I can't thank you enough for taking your time to talk to us this morning. Thank you. It was All a lot right. of fun. What Bye -bye. do you guys say? <laughs> <laughs> Have a great week, guys. See you. Bye, guys.